When I think about the value of friendship, some key words come to mind. Compassion, loyalty, and kindness. The most valuable thing in my life is friendship, and it has never been as much as something to my life lately through some weird circumstances. I grew up with the same two best friends. I hated high school, and I was a kid in the back of the class. I was scared to speak in peer scrutiny, so I didn't bully my own class. I lived with eight girls, including my RA, and Laurel. And we've grown so close in the past month, and I know that they were there for me for anything I needed. That is definitely a testament to the work that you About two weeks ago, I started not to feel well, so I went to the student health center. They couldn't really figure out what was wrong, so they ran a bunch of blood tests, and they found out that my blood sugar was so high that I couldn't keep my temperature. I called my RA to shroud the fact that I'd have to go to the hospital. I walked back to my dorm, crying, scared, and even through a carpet on campus floor. And my mind was racing. When I got back to my dorm, both of my RAs and my students were all there to comfort and support me for the first time in my life. I left my dorm not knowing when I would come back or what my life would look like. I had never been to an adult hospital, emergency room, never mind the fact that I was across the country from any parent that I had. I called my mom upset at the life change that I could be experiencing, and she was really upset with me being even more scared. It was only a month into my freshman year. My roommate drove myself, my sweetmate, and my RA to the hospital, and they were making jokes in the car to try and lighten the mood, but I was in shock, so I don't think I said anything to my face. I was supposed to go surfing that night, so I was supposed to skip my health center appointment, but I really wanted to go surfing, and my students were supposed to go out to dinner, but they canceled their plans to come with me. When I arrived at the hospital, I was overwhelmed to say the least. I didn't know what to expect. It was my RA's first American hospital, so it was a great experience for him. Not really, because it was terrifying. The hospital was really scary, and I think I was probably the only one under the age of 50. The day moved quickly, as you can expect with hospitals, so I was waiting and waiting there for three hours. I couldn't even go on my phone, because my mind was racing so fast, and I didn't know what to do. My RA and my students all stayed with me in the hospital until we were kicked out because I was being admitted for planning. I was slowly losing my vision in the emergency room, but I was too scared to tell my RA that I couldn't see her feet down the five stairs, five stairs in front of us that I didn't want to take her out. My RA had asked to pray for me in the waiting room. I had never had someone pray for me. I didn't grow up Christian, so when she started praying out loud, that was a bit of a shocker. But I felt a sense of calm in such a situation of chaos. I didn't want them to leave, and they didn't want to leave the night either, but they didn't have a choice because I couldn't have anyone stay here. They FaceTimed and texted me the whole night, but they made sure that I didn't feel alone or scared. When visiting hours began the next morning, they were there for me, and they were there to see me, comfort me, and check on how I was doing. They were anticipating my return home and texting me when I would come back and who could drive me back from the hospital. But when I found out that I wouldn't be able to leave that morning, I was upset to say the least. One thing that I wanted in the world in this moment was to go out to my seat and hang out and not stop until I was admitted to the hospital. But my students were able to show me positivity when mine was surely running out. They wanted me to know that I wasn't alone, even if they couldn't be with me physically 24 7. Walking out of the hospital two days later, I returned home, but not with the same person that I was before. I was not the mental type on that team. I had a hard time with every single change I came with it. I had to eat different. I had to constantly monitor my blood sugar, and my roommate even gave me my first insulin shot because I didn't have my vision back and I couldn't use it for that time. But I had so much support in my new life. I was greeted with door signs and letters when I returned home. My roommate took me food shopping and then read an email that made me feel better. Um, and my RA boyfriend even put on my blood sugar monitor because I was too scared to do it myself. Adjusting to this new lifestyle was definitely the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my life. Never mind the fact that I felt like I was doing it alone for some of it. I had finally felt normal in college for most of my life, but I now feel different again. I can't do the same things about my friends who had often just don't feel good. I'm tired and fatigued, and you never know what's going to happen in the future. I can't order at restaurants because I'm too scared that I won't feel well. But last Saturday, my senior could tell that something was wrong. And everyone else was out, it was a Saturday night, and I hadn't felt good the whole day because my blood sugar was so high. 
Just all the homework and work that she has planned to do all week just to stay in and hang out with me. We ran around our building, leaving notes and messing around with people, and it was the first time I was able to forget about everything happening in my life. She was Abraham Strangers, but I didn't know one month ago I've been able to show him my true friendship with Jesus Christ. The value of friendship is truly priceless. I kind of expected that this would be my life one month ago, and I was caught off guard by something I never thought could happen to me. Although sometimes it can feel like a social experiment living with a bunch of strangers in a strange place across the country, I wouldn't trade it for the world. These eight strangers have saved my life with their friendship, and getting diagnosed is one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with mentally and physically, but I can't imagine doing it alone. My students truly embody every quality someone could wish for in a friend.